Hello, this is lesson number 67. Today we are going to learn about pregnancy and rashes factor. Have you ever known what happens when a pregnant woman is carrying a baby who is having an opposite rashes factor to hers? Do you think the resultant effect could be good or bad? Definitely it's bad and it's lethal. It may cause death of the young man. And before we understand that, I would like us to know um I would like us to know more about the rashes factor, what it's all about and where it's found in the body of an individual. On the surface of the red blood cells that are found in the body of an individual, there is an antigen. Uh, there are different types of antigens which are identified based on alpha, uh, some alphabetical letters. That is antigen A, antigen B, or O. Those individuals whose surface of the red blood cell contains antigen A are termed as those who have blood group A. The same to B and for blood group AB, they have both antigens on the surface of the red blood cell. For those people who have blood group O, are said to be lacking antigen on the surface of their red blood cells. In addition to those, um, in addition to the blood groups, in addition to those uh, antigens that are found on the surface of the red blood cell, we also have another type of protein that is called the rhesus factor. There are some individuals who have the rhesus factor on the surface of the red, their red blood cells, while there are some who doesn't have the rhesus factor. And therefore, those people who have the rhesus factor on the surface of the red, their red blood cells are said to be having a positive rhesus factor, while those who do not have the rhesus factor on the surface of their red blood cells are said to be having a negative rhesus factor. I would like us to look at this uh, diagram as I'm going to use it to explain what happens in um, the body of an individual who is having um, the hemolytic disease of the newborn. This disease is also called erythroblastosis fetalis. The term erythroblastosis has been obtained from the word erythrocyte. Erythrocyte refers to the red blood cell. Erythroblastosis, therefore, refers to destruction of the red blood cell. Erythroblastosis fetalis is a condition whereby the red blood cells of the fetus are destroyed when they are still immature. On the other hand, the word hemolytic disease of the newborn, let us try to understand the word hemolytic has been obtained from the word hemolyze, which means destroy the red blood cell. Therefore, hemolytic disease of the newborn refers to a disease which attack the young ones which have just been born and it is due to this condition called erythroblastosis fetalis because its red blood cells were destroyed. When the red blood cells have been destroyed, uh, uh, been destroyed when, uh, when the young one was still in the womb, then it may suffer from some diseases such as anemia, which is as a, re as a result of lack of red blood cells in the body. Let us try to see how this condition, erythroblastosis fetalis, is caused and what causes it and how these red blood cells are destroyed. When 
I'm a woman who is having a negative ratios factor, like these ones here, bears a young one who is having a, a, a positive ratios factor, then there is what we call genetic incompatibility. Here, the mother's immune system will react in a certain way that we are going to see here. And in the beginning, some traces of red blood cell from the fetal circulation will diffuse into the mother's circulation. We call it maternal circulation through the placenta. When they come out and reach the mother's circulation through the placenta, these red blood cells, remember, they have the ratios factor on them, while the mother's red blood cells do not have the ratios factor. This will cause the mother's immune system to identify these red blood cells as foreign antigens or non-self antigen. Remember, I told you that when these uh, fragments of red blood cells or some traces of red blood cells from the fetus diffuses into the maternal circulation, that is the mother's circulation through the placenta, then the immune system of the mother will identify these red blood cells of the fetus as foreign antigens. Hence, the antibodies are produced to fight these foreign antigens. These antibodies that are produced may be fewer in number for the first pregnancy, hence the baby may be born alive. As the time goes by, in between pregnancy, remember the mother has now given birth to the young one, and there are some antibodies which were produced during that pregnancy. The process of antibody production by the immune system of the mother will still continue and these antibodies which are produced are stored in what we call immunological memory. Every individual has an immunological memory whereby the antibodies are stored there so that next time the body encounters another antigen of the same kind, the antibodies are already in the immune system. So, between the pregnancy, the, immu uh, the antibodies are still produced within the mother's circulation. Then, in the second pregnancy, the antibodies are already there in the mother's circulation. Therefore, they will start attacking the young one directly. They attack the red blood cells of this fetus while it is still young. If that happens, then they will end up destroying the red blood cell. You can see these words over here. I have a diagram here to illustrate it and make it a bit simpler. This one here is a father who is ratios positive. He happens to uh, marry a woman who is ratios negative. This woman carries the pregnancy of a, 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 a fetus who is ratios positive like the father. You can see this one of the father is ratios positive. Then some traces of uh, red blood cells from the fetal circulation have entered the maternal circulation here. And when that happens, the maternal circulation responds by producing the antibodies. Now we call them the anti ratios factor antibody, anti ratios antibody. This anti ratios antibody may now attack the young one's red blood cells. Why are they attacking the red blood cell? Because they were produced to get rid of the ratios factor. Yet the ratios factor is stuck onto the surface of the red blood cell. They will end up destroying the red blood cell. 
This condition is lethal in the uh, subsequent births, but for the first one, it may come out alive. But for the ones that follow, the probability of coming out alive is quite diff uh, quite uh, lower because uh, too much antibodies have already been produced by the mother's uh, immune system, hence they are in circulation. So they will end up destroying the red blood cells of the young one, hence they make uh, the young one to die. In some cases, the young one may come out alive and with some uh, blue spots on the body. This is an indication that this young one is suffering from this disease called hemolytic disease of the newborn. In some cases, they were, uh, you, they used, uh, people used to refer to them as the blue babies and uh, just due to the fact that they are having some blue spots onto their bodies as you can see this one over here. This condition is lethal, but nowadays, due to advancement in technology, there is what we call intrauterine transfusion. This is whereby blood transfusion is done to the fetus while it's still in the mother's womb, and this method can be used whereby a blood that is uh, comprising of uh, ratios, a negative ratios factor, that is the blood without ratios uh, factor, can be injected into the biological system of this young one when it is still in the womb of the mother. And when that blood is injected into the uh, uh, circulation of this young one when still in the mother, then the antibodies of the mother may not act upon it. Antibodies of the mother may not destroy it, uh, may not destroy these RBCs of the young one, hence it will survive uh, very well. That's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.